This is my first time watching The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, so I think this is going to be a fun reaction. A my double date. How are you? Yeah. Got to handle. Well, I see the resemblance, definitely. Yeah. My mom used to call us chocolate and vanilla. All right, so it's good to see you again. You know, I thought today we would go over the plan for your surgery, which is coming up this week. Yes. Well, the beginning is really good because Dr. Neil Handel is a very well-known expert in plastic surgery of the breast. I've actually read some of his articles and have learned some from him. But let me just go through your history. You first had a breast augmentation about 30 years ago? Yeah. Is that right? It's been that long. Yeah. And then I know that you've had a couple of subsequent revisions. Yeah. And recently you noticed a change in the size of the breast. It deflated. It's like the tire on your car. It just goes flat. All right, let's unpack this first. So she had her first augmentation 30 years ago. She's had subsequent revision surgeries. Now, there are studies that do show that upwards of one third of women who've had breast implants have further surgery within the first 10 years of when they have their implants placed. Now, she has a deflation, meaning that she has a saline implant, an implant filled with salt water that has basically burst. And like a balloon that bursts, that salt water empties out, your body absorbs it, and usually within anywhere from a couple of hours to a few days, you notice that your breast has deflated like a tire. Our plan is to remove both implants. Right. Because you had a previous lumpectomy to remove a benign tumor, and now she's left with deformity because of that. It kind of looks like somebody took a big bite out of it. No. Like that. So Kim had a previous history of a lumpectomy, basically removal of a portion of the breast tissue to look for cancer. Well, sometimes these types of biopsies can be done without removing much tissue or even just by utilizing a needle. But in her case, unfortunately, they took a good amount of tissue. Uh, sounds like one that created quite a bit of a deformity in her breast. Also, I want to do breast uplift on both sides to make her look as normal and symmetrical as possible. So it's really important to realize that there are two cosmetic surgeries that we do on breasts. We can do an augmentation, meaning placement of implants. This makes a breast larger, and or we can do a lift. And during a lift, we remove excess skin from the breast. We bring the nipple up into a higher position, but we do that at the expense of permanent scarring. So implants do not lift the breasts, and lifts do not make the breasts any bigger. Got it. When Kim had the benign tumor 10 years ago and had to have the lumpectomy, it was very scary, obviously, because we lost our mom to breast cancer. I can't even talk about it. It gives me so much anxiety. One in nine women will get breast cancer during their lifetime. So it is so important to get your annual mammograms uh, once you turn 40 or 50, depending on what your doctor recommends, and to do breast self-exams. By doing breast self-exams, you may be able to find a tumor before your doctor does or before a mammogram, and that way you may be able to find it earlier and hopefully catch it at a stage where it's completely curable. Take a quick look, okay. and uh, you know, you know, I'm gonna ask my partner, Dr. Monty, to come in too. Is that all right? Sorry, get... stop. Why don't you just bite the whole block? <laughs> Come and we'll have, we'll have the parking crew and the Yeah, that would be great. No, I just figured another pair of eyes. Yes, okay. It's yeah. good. <laughs> you know, we've worked together for about 20 years. I am not the kind of person that can just walk around naked freely in front of everybody. Dr. So. Handel taught me everything I know about <laughs> breast revision. Okay. Kim has always been like that. I mean, she's just like, anyway. <laughs> you usually don't wear a bra. <laughs> For some reason, it seemed like when I was in Beverly Hills for that one year, there were so many of our patients who had no problem just taking their top off in front of anybody in the office. And some of them would literally, with their top off, just walk out into the hall, not caring. I mean, it blew my mind. I never saw anything like that when I did my residency uh, in Grand Rapids at Michigan State. And here in my practice in Detroit, for the last 15 years, I've never had anybody do this. But in Beverly Hills, I tell you, it's a different world out there. So here's the basic situation. She's had several pairs of implants. Obviously, this side is deflated. She's got this divot here. But you have a fair amount of your own breast tissue. So I think we're going to get a very nice result without an implant. Because you're so petite, you don't want big breasts. It doesn't fit your body. I never really wanted to. No, you know what? I, I have been performing so many implant removals over the last couple of years. It seems like more and more women are deciding that they don't necessarily want their implants anymore. Some of this could be due to breast implant illness. 
Uh, and that is a constellation of symptoms that some women appear to get uh, and have due to their breast implants. And for other women, as they get older, sometimes they just say, look, I'm just done with my implants. I know they taught you into much bigger implants than you wanted. I understand that, so my we're boyfriend. not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to Friday. Thank you. Okay, big hug. I'll see you Thank Friday you, as well. thank you so okay, much. You nice meeting Bye. you both. You too, Carl. Thank nice to you, take care. Thank you. This is one of the things that irks me the most in plastic surgery, and it sounds like it happened to Kim. You have boyfriends and sometimes husbands who push, push, push their spouse or their girlfriend to go bigger with their implants than they may really want. And I do see that occasionally in my practice, and I get so angry with it because if you're having breast augmentation, it is your body. It is not your husband's body. It is not your boyfriend's body. It is your body. And the decision of, number one, whether to have implants, and number two, what size to go with, that decision should be yours alone, should be the patient's alone. Good morning. Good morning. You made it. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Good. All Thank right, you. the big day has arrived. Yeah. All right, our plan is to remove both implants. Okay. And if there's any abnormal tissue in there, if there's anything that looks suspicious, then we will remove it and send it for a biopsy. Okay. Anytime I do breast surgery and I remove breast tissue, even if it's just a little bit of skin, definitely if it's tissue on the inside of the breast, I always send it to a pathologist because we wanna get it checked out in case you find cancer. And I do remember one case several years ago where I did a breast reduction on a patient and in that tissue that we removed, there was a breast cancer there. So it was a blessing to the patient that we did find it during that operation. And then she got the appropriate treatment before it had grown too large or spread to other organs. Oh, so stressful. Did you get any sleep last night? Barely. I went to bed, but I couldn't barely sleep. Cause you were thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's time. Uh... My patients tell me all the time how hard it is to sleep the night before an operation. It's like if you've got an early morning flight, and you, let's say you got a flight at five or six in the morning and you just never sleep well the night before an airplane flight, same thing with surgery. Did you know that you can look upwards of five years younger in just two minutes a day? You don't need to put a ton of products on your skin to look and feel amazing. The Yoon Beauty Two Minutes Five Years Younger Skincare Bundle is perfect for the busy person who wants glowing skin with the least amount of work. I put these four products together just for you. They're made with natural and organic ingredients, great for all skin types, and perfect for all genders. Check out the Yoon Beauty Two Minutes Five Years Younger Skincare Bundle at yoonbeauty.com and get over $30 off the individual product price. I guarantee you'll love these products or your money back. of the nipple position, the shape of the areola and all that. Come on, this is where all the good stuff happens. Ready to go. Let's use the lidocaine. Don't be so nervous, it's gonna be okay. Just relax. My patients tell me all the time that the scariest part of surgery is not going under the knife. It's not uh, hoping to get the result they're looking for. It's anesthesia. And so many of my patients are afraid that they go under anesthesia and they're not gonna wake up. And the good news is, is that the chances of that happening are so, so incredibly small. Dr. Tarani, you ready to get started? Yes. We have Kim Richards. We're doing explantation removal of breast implants with total capsulectomies. And they give you a little bit of oxygen here, okay? Next thing you know, we're gonna be all done. So what does that mean? Well, explantation means removal of her implants. A mastopexy is a breast lift, and a capsulectomy is removal of the scar tissue surrounding the breast implant. Now, every breast implant has scar tissue surrounding it. Sometimes the scar tissue is real thick, and you can get what's called a capsular contracture. Other times, and hopefully most of the time, it is quite thin so that the breasts look and feel very, very natural. I don't like anything to do with doctors and hospitals. My whole body goes numb. I go back to being in the hospital with my mom, the doctor sat us in a room and said, your mom has breast cancer. And it was stage three at that point. 
Stage three breast cancer is definitely advanced breast cancer, meaning that the breast cancer is actually extended beyond its original place and has invaded surrounding tissues like lymph nodes or even muscles. Um, but it is not spread distantly. It doesn't have distant metastases like to the brain or the lungs or other organs. My mom just wanted to pretend like she was fine because she, she was so scared to die. And I, I can remember thinking, you know, I kind of want her to be like, it's okay, this is life, and you know, but she wasn't that person. She would tell me, she would say to me, Kyle, I don't want to die, I'm terrified. And I still have so much to teach you. And she said, I don't, I don't want to leave, I don't want to miss out on anything with you girls. As much as we all poke fun at the Real Housewives for fighting with each other and all of their excesses in life, uh, they are still real people, and it's a really sad to hear about what happened to her mother. Hi. How Hi. are you? How are you? Good to see you. Yes, how are you? How I'm good. She's perfect. Okay, well, we just well. finished. We're extremely well. So is it time to see her? Yes. Does it look scary? You did great. No. You're all done. No. Do you want to sit up a little bit? Uh, Should I give her first AV? So we're going to keep you comfortable. It doesn't, doesn't look like she should go home yet. Oh no, not yet. People wake up from anesthesia in so many different ways. There are some people who wake up and they're just calm and it looks as if they just took a little nap. Other people wake up and they're combative and they want to punch you in things. And I've had patients almost punch me in the face not knowing that it's me and they're just coming out of anesthesia. Hi, Kim. Hello. How do you feel? Oh, wait. What? Awake. You're awake. awake. Yeah, you're awake. awake. You're fine. You're, you're, you're totally fine. Well, we're going to keep her here for about an hour. So I then you to take her home and she's going to recover just great. And then she'll get back to normal. You tell Kyle? I'm Kyle. Oh, yeah. I'm Kyle. I spoke to Kimberly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Don't look scary. No, you look scary. Me a little bit scary. <laughs> <laughs> The surgery that Kim had luckily is not one that is technically considered a real painful operation. Uh, usually patients have a little drain afterwards that can stay in for up to a week to allow that old pocket that the implant was in to heal up and close up on itself. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills or Keeping Up with the Kardashians? How about watching an episode from Keeping Up with the Kardashians where Kris Jenner undergoes a facelift? Take a peek where I react to an episode right here. And remember, Eat real food, use clean skincare, and always consider actual plastic surgery as a last resort.